The RV Show USA is brought to you by Rockwood, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. Class A, B, or C, a bumper pool too, a five or toy hauler or van. Watching out for you, just like he's supposed to, and that's why he's called the wingman. The wingman's back on the radio again. All right, Alan Warren, the RV wingman, back with you. So does it feel like summertime yet? Heck yeah, you know what that means. It means that we're going to be seeing a lot more accidents and near accidents, many of them on account of faulty tires and blowouts. Now, a blowout is never fun. They're always dangerous, but a blowout with your RV can can be a real catastrophe. On the RV Show USA guest line is a man that knows a lot about tires, probably more than anybody else in the country. Let's bring up our friend Mr. Roger Marvel. So, Roger, it's that time of year when we really start seeing these blowouts, isn't it? Yes, it is, Alan. What, why? Can you tell us why we see so many right now? Well, RVs in general are right at the edge or maybe even over the edge for tire performance. Uh, and when the heat goes up, it increases the stresses, softens the rubber, weakens the rubber, and the end result is a tire can fail, uh, not just because it's hot today, but because it's been overloaded, damage has been done for the last six months, six years, and the heat is just an added stress. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Yes, absolutely. People seem to think that if the tire was inflated 10 minutes ago correctly, It was perfect at that point, but you can do damage and it can take uh, weeks, months, and sometimes years for that damage to uh, kick you in the butt. To to manifest itself. So so you know so much about tires. Tell everybody a little bit about your background and uh, because, folks, this guy, Roger Marble, is the tire authority, I'm telling you. Well, uh, there probably are people that know about tires, too, but... uh, I've been uh, I was a tire engineer for 40 years, uh, then I retired. Uh, but while I was working, I worked on everything from the little donut spares that people think are awful, but uh, I know about a test of four donut spares on a Corvette to wow. make sure the vehicle could still handle well. But I worked on those. I worked on truck tires. I worked on Indianapolis tires with a couple of guys by the name of uh, Michael and... Ready, I think, and an <laughs> Al Unser. I think I've you know. heard those names. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, uh, matter of fact, I even, uh, one claim to fame is I managed to puncture an entire set of tires for Mariel. But, anyways. Well, good for you. So, I, so I did so that. G- give me an example of the kind of research you did while you were uh, a tire engineer. I know you rubbed elbows with, with some of the big shots, uh, you know, in the, the racing industry. But what, what were you doing as an engineer? Well, in racing, there's nothing more out of date than last week's winner. Um, You have compounds that you can change, rubber formulas. Um, And it isn't like, well, there's four formulas and you're you're done with that because a formula might contain 20 different chemicals in different amounts. Um, Think about baking a cake Mm -hmm. and it says flour. Well, go to a grocery store and look at all the types of flour. You can bake a cake with each type of flour, and I'll bet you the average person could probably tell the difference between just changing the brand of flour. Well, we've got the same thing with tires in that one of the components is carbon black. That's why tires are black. Carbon black is what helps to bond the rest of the stuff together and there are different suppliers of carbon black and the carbon black is made in different methods so even the carbon black difference can end up giving different performance so they so that, it may, so it may just, look the same to, to the uh, untrained observer to, to me but oh, they're not the same absolutely and that's just the rubber uh in the tread and then you have The body cord, uh, the body cord uh, in radials, of course, runs from the bead. That's now where 
it attaches to the wheel, up to the tread, and back down to the bead on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's radials. But in the tread, there's uh, steel cords or nylon cords or Kevlar cords or rayon cords. I mean, there's a bunch of different materials, but the cords run at opposite angles. And just changing that angle one or two degrees can give you quite a bit different performance. So now you have what material do you use, what angle do you use of the cords, and then you have what rubber do you use for the actual tread, and how hot is it going to be at the race next week? Because if you've got a 90-degree day, one compound might work real well, and another tire might get overheated and okay. fail. Okay, Roger, you've totally impressed me, but you are you are way talking baseball right now and over my head. Generally speaking, and I, and I appreciate it, but generally speaking, talk with me, because I know you're an RVer as well. What is the yes. What are the major causes of tire failure for RVers, and, and specifically, I guess, blowouts, because that's the worst kind you can have? The number one failure is due to overloading, and underinflation. When the sidewall lets out the air, many times that is because the tire has been punctured or cut or has a valve leaking, and the tire is losing air. But if it's, especially if it's a trailer and you're pulling it, you don't know that it's losing air. And it might take five or ten minutes to lose air, depending on the size of the puncture. And when it gets low enough, the flexing of the sidewall gets hot enough to melt the polyester. That means you're hitting 400 degrees. Wow. And even if you've been losing air, I'll tell you, a tire just with five PSI in it will still make a loud bang. And if you're not expecting it, you can't really tell the difference between an explosion of 5 PSI and an explosion of 20 PSI in a, in a tire. So are you telling me that most of the, of the RV tire failures are consumer-induced? Uh, I mean, they're operator error from not being aware or just overloading under low, too low a pressure, uh, and they're not yes. due to a faulty now, tire? No, not the fault. I'm not going to as- assign fault Um, as they did something, because sometimes it's because they didn't do something. Hmm. Average RV, um, based on tens of thousands of measurements, when we weigh the RV on certified scales, each tire, the average um, is something like 57% of the RVs that have been weighed have a tire or axle in overload. And this is of people that are paying to have their RV weighed, which means you would think they would make a little extra effort or they're interested. But what happens is they don't realize how much um, a stack of books weighs or that toolbox weighs. So you're telling me that, that generally speaking, at least half of the RVs that are on the road today are carrying too much weight, and they are stressing out, causing undue stress on their tires, which could cause a catastrophic accident. And yeah. they don't even know it. Right. Wow. Is and there a specific even, brand that, that is head and shoulders above any others? We're going to take a break in about a minute and come back on the other side. But is there a specific brand that you go, now they make good tires, or, or is there a specific brand to stay away from, or what are your thoughts on that? All right, let's separate the market into trailer types, which are ST type, and everything else. In the ST market right now, I think the Goodyear uh, Endurance, which is a relatively new line of ST tires, seems to be uh, considerably better than many others. I can't say it's the best, but it's certainly getting the fewest complaints based on the half dozen to dozen 
RV forums that I monitor. I probably hey, hey monitor. Roger, hang on. we got to take a hard break, yeah. so we're going to pick it up on the other side. Folks, his name is Roger Marble. He is probably the smartest man in the country when it comes to tires, and we've got him for another segment right here. Uh, we're going to ask him when we come back from the right, what are China bombs? Is there really such a thing? And if there is, why do they blow up? This is the country's most listened to and talked about show on radio and social media about the RV lifestyle. I'm Alan Warren, the RV wingman. Back after this. Alan Warren, the RV wingman, working every single day to help make you a smarter RVer by connecting you with the smartest and most uh, honorable folks around when it comes to all things RV related. Why? Because uh, smarter RVers are happy campers. I want you to be a happy camper. On the RV Show USA guest line is our resident tire expert, a retired tire engineer who has performed autopsies, as he says, for 40 years on tires to determine the cause of their failure. Roger Marble, it doesn't take uh, very long on social media to hear RVers talk about things they call China bombs. Can you talk to me about China bombs? And what's the real story about them? China bombs is a catch-all for tires that have failed for any reason, and usually they're on trailers. And since almost all trailers until a couple of years ago came on tires made in China, that meant any failure could be associated with a tire made in China. Um, a couple times I've asked about, well, what about those junk trailers built in, in Indiana? Since the majority of trailers are built in Indiana, Elkhart specifically, mm-hmm. does that mean they're Elkhart? They're all junk? They're all junk? I mean, no. But if you, you know, causation and correlation are two different things. Just because most of the tires, 80, 90 percent, came from China, does it not make sense that 80, 90 percent of the tires that had a failure would have been made in China? Yes. So that's where that's where the China bomb uh, theory comes from. I, I cannot figure out the science behind the zip code of the plant. So it's just a catch-all phrase that people use, and, and, and what I'm gathering, you're not saying this, but I'm kind of reading between the lines, a lot of times when people say it's a China bomb, it's they can look in the mirror and accept some of the responsibility for maybe having too much weight in their RV, uh, their tires don't have enough pressure. Talk to me about if somebody wanted to buy an American-made tire. What choices do we have? Are, are there any tire plants, for rubber trailers, plants? For tra- well, there's a number of. Uh, rubber plants in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for trailers with ST type. Right now, um, if if you twisted my arm, I would have to say that Goodyear uh, uh, Endurance is probably, uh, I'm going to say, one of the best. Mm -hmm. Because I have not seen any, uh, you know, direct comparison of, even two or three brands of tires and just saying, well, Fred ran, you know, this brand and Charlie ran that brand and Fred had failures. Well, yeah, but the trailers are different. The use is different. The speed is different. The inflation, too many other things come into it. You have to run controlled testing. I used to run uh, somewhere between 250 to 400 cars, um, that means times four for the number of tires testing. Uh, part of my job was keeping new constructions and evaluating on two to 400 cars running all the time. These are on people that used to drive 1,000 miles a week. So it would give us early warning of or early knowledge that this new construction really doesn't deliver or this new construction is better than that construction. Right. So... You can't just say that because one set of tires or one person had four failures um, that the tires were bad. Uh, You can check with DOT, see if there's a recall, see if there's complaints, see if there's investigation. 
but a lot of times those complaints, the people don't if even I'm, know. Uh, the brand we only have a few higher. minutes left, and I'm not trying to push, but I want to get as much information from you as yep. I can that we as RVers can really uh, connect with. If I want to get the right information right now, I'm concerned about getting the truth about the condition that my tires are in. Where do I go without getting just a sales pitch? Hey, you need those. It'll get you 60,000 miles. And, you know, uh, is there any. I mean, I see these young guys, well, and I'm not criticizing anybody, but I go into a, one of the biggest places, you know, and they're young guys, and I don't know how much training they've got, but they, I don't know if they just look up on a computer and go, there's your tire. I don't know anything about them except they're black, round, and full of air. Uh, I would say that that's probably true. They're taught how to sell tires. Um, it takes decades of experience to, to do forensics. Um, I teach forensics. I've taught forensics to DOT engineers. Uh, I would say a place I would suggest, you can check out my blog, uh, rvtiresafety.net. I don't sell tires. I don't sell wheels. I don't sell valves. I give away information. Um, yeah, we're going to give that website again in just a couple of minutes, Good. folks, because you, you really, if you're interested, you're concerned, you just want to be sure about the condition of your tires, you don't want to get a sales pitch, there's nobody better that I know of than is on the line with us right now, Roger Marble. So what are your thoughts on tire pressure monitoring systems? I think I know, but but share your ideas and thoughts about that. Get one, period. Any brand is better than none. It will monitor the pressure, and that could eliminate 50% of the failures on the highway. Uh, tires fail from age and heat or loss of air. And how about eliminating the loss of air as uh, one of the main reasons for tire failure? Um, you get, get it. It's a little bit like insurance, but you bought it, and you can keep the unit and move from RV to RV to RV, so it's not like it, it expires. Um, they run maybe $300 and up, depending on how many tires you have. Um, and, and some of them even RV have a temperature gauge in them, right? They do, but the pressure is the number one thing. Okay, but, it, you know, for example, on a, on a travel trailer, if you've got a wheel bearing going out, you're going to see a, a rise in uh, temperature on that one tire with, a, with one of these uh, nice tire pressure monitoring systems. Yes? Yes. All right. So what's your, if you had in, in one minute, what advice would you give me if I know it's been four or five years, the tires may be mismatched, I got a little bit of wear, I need to go get new shoes for my RV. What, what, in one minute, what do you suggest that I do, Roger, besides go to rvtiresafety.net? Check, read your owner's manual, follow the instructions on the maintenance that it says to do with, uh, with maintaining tires maintaining inflation, and checking load. That's what you ought to do. Yeah, it, it, may, it may shock you as well. Listen, Roger, before we let you go, one more time, your website is? RVTireSafety.net. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Let's get you on again and have a safe summer wherever you RV, and we'll talk to you soon, all right? Okay. All right, you take care. All right, folks, that dude right there, I'm telling you, he is some kind of smart when it comes to RVs. Yes, he is. Now, Roger may be retired, but he, um, he stays plenty busy. He still writes for RVTravel.com. He's got a, like uh, he was talking about, he's got a great website, lots of information. You need to check it out. Again, it's RVTireSafety.net, RVTireSafety.net. Now, before we close the show, um, if you have any tire questions, maybe you'd like to ask Roger directly, well, you can do it on our upcoming live stream that's going to be this next Wednesday evening. Here's what you need to do. Just grab your cell phone right now, and you send me a text, okay? Then on Wednesday night, when Roger and I are taking calls, I will text you our call-in telephone number when we're ready to take your call. Real simple. Just text the word right now. Text the word wingman, one word wingman, to 38470. You'll actually get an immediate bounce-back message from me. And um, like I said, then on Wednesday night when we're taking calls, I'll send you another text with our telephone number when we are ready to take your call. So if you have a tire question and you would like to have it answered by our tire expert, Mr. Marble, text me right now. Again, wingman to 38470. Again, wingman 38470. I know it doesn't sound like a telephone number, but I promise you that it is. Uh, wingman to 38470. 
Uh, finally, a great big thank you to everybody listening and a big shout out to each and every one of our station affiliates that carry America's most listened to and talked about show about radio on the radio and social media about the RV lifestyle. We are most grateful to you. Until next time, I am Alan Warren, the RV wingman, steering you away from trouble and connecting you with the very best, the most honest folks in the RV industry. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave those good manners at home. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.